Are you ready to stop riding the emotional elevator of life? Are you ready to learn how to elevate your emotions that keep you psychologically traumatized or in an addictive behavior? You are in the right place. Here is your host, Sandy Bird, trauma, addiction, life, and spiritual coach of The Emotional Elevator Show. Welcome, everyone. Sorry, I just had to clean my teeth. Welcome. You are listening to Sandy Bird. You're listening to Emotional Elevator. I am Sandy Bird, and this is Inspired Choices Network. And like I always like to tell you, if you're listening on any other live stream anywhere, here to Inspired Choices Network and join the chat room. All you got to do is go to Inspired Choices Network. There is a little tab that says chat room. That's where you go. Join us. We can have some open conversations or I can at least answer a question if you have a question because tonight's topic is about neurodivergent and or trauma. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me. And if you're watching me, and this is maybe your first time watching me, you might see me with a wand. And the wand has always been the question, why do I hold a wand? Well, because I am your fairy coach. And if I could change anything, what would that be? Anything. But I'm not changing it. You're changing it. Because that's what a coach does. It helps you to elevate yourself or helps you to look at what it is you want to change within yourself. So that is me, Sandy Bird. I am a coach that works with individuals who want to change themselves, who want to figure out how I can feel worthy, how I can feel valued, and maybe how I can step into who I want, who I'm meant to be, figure out my purpose in life. Maybe it's just basically standing up for yourself, but standing up for yourself in a positive way, standing up for yourself and asserting yourself to others without knocking them down, but asserting in a powerful life. Maybe it's because you worry that hmm, if I say the wrong thing tonight, maybe somebody won't like me. Well, guess what? You can say the wrong things all the time, and there might be someone who still likes you, just might get in their feelings, and that's okay. Or maybe you just question, is this really my belief, or is this a belief that's been embedded in me? Or is that my value, or is that a value that I've just incorporated into myself? That's what I work with individuals on, is figuring out who it is you are meant to be by using techniques and tools that I have in my toolbox that discovers. We talk all about discovering who you want to be. And a lot of everything I've gone through that journey, and I want to take you in on that journey. I want you to go on this journey together. Because the biggest things in life is getting over those feelings of lack. The lack of self-confidence. Am I pretty enough to be on a podcast for people to see me? Aren't I smart enough to talk about these topics I'm talking about? Ooh, what if somebody gets offended by something I say? What if I don't say the right things? Do you have those thoughts sometimes in your mind? Then you've come to the right place. And I could be the right coach for you because that's all of those things that sometimes some of us tell ourselves is what I like to work with you on. Because not only have I experienced that, so I, I've experienced it, but I also now have the tools to elevate you to get over those negative thoughts, those thoughts of self-doubt or Hmm, I'm not worthy enough to be a coach like Sandy. Yes, you are. We all are. We are worthy to help others. Hmm, Sandy, really, she's powerful with what she talks about. You can be too. So just think about that when you kind of listen to my show about what are 
the things that you worry about? What keeps you up at night? Is it, maybe I shouldn't have said that to my husband. Does my husband really love me? Or is he just comfortable with me right now? Is he afraid of change? What can I do? Because I feel this empty hole inside of me. And I worry about my kids because they no longer live under my roof. And hmm, who am I now? Because I'm no longer mom, but you still are mom. Now I'm with him all the time. Am I happy? What makes me happy? Do I really live a fulfilled life? What fills me up? So that's what kind of coach I am, is I am the coach that's going to use this magic wand and ask you, what is it that you desire? What is it that you worry about? What is it that makes you happy? Do you even know what self-love is? And do you love yourself? And if you don't, why don't you? Because in order to, and I had a conversation with somebody, and this is probably going to be a show coming up, is sometimes our mindsets affect everything. Our health, our brains, our psychological health, our emotional health, all comes from this little thing we call the mind. And that's why you hear a lot of people talking about Expanding your mindset, working on your mindset. Because this brain, this mindset, this subconscious, all of this basically kind of controls our daily life. Because think about it. They don't pull the plug on you unless the plug's been pulled on you. Your heart stops. But if you are brain dead, that's when they ask, do you want to pull the plug? Because this brain controls everything. And if you are not able to realize you can change your brain or your mindset, that's where your struggles lie. That's where that worry comes from. That's where that feelings of unworthiness, unvalued. That's what keeps you up at night. It's when you can quiet that that subconscious or that brain or that mind. That's not what tonight's show is all about, but I could go on and on and on about it. Tonight's show is about neurodivergent. Are you neurodivergent? Do you even know what neurodivergent is? Or are you in trauma? Is it a trauma brain? Because there's something I found out and even working with other clients that I found this out to be true for a lot more women than we think. Are you, so I'm going to read you the clips from my show. Are you neurodivergent or is it a trauma response? Do you know what neurodivergent means? Do you know that trauma is processed differently in someone who has ADHD or autism? Do you ever feel like you just can't let go of that feeling or thought that keeps coming up? Do you ever feel like nobody understands you? Are your thoughts always racing and you feel it's a trauma response? Well, in this episode, I, your host, Sandy Bird, will talk about my journey into discovering I had ADHD and the changes it has made in my life. I will also, Sandy will also talk about how ADHD and autism affects our ability to overcome trauma. Sandy will talk Oh, I missed a word in that when I wrote that up. Sandy will talk about the techniques she has incorporated in her life to overcome her daily struggles. Sandy will talk about the techniques she teaches her clients to use who, yep, I just lost my notes. Now I'm scrolling back up. Teaches her clients to use who have also been diagnosed with ADHD or autism who also deal with trauma. So that's what tonight's show is. And I'm not sitting here trying to get everybody to run out and get diagnosed as a neurodivergent or ADHD. There is a broad spectrum. And over the years, it's become more apparent. The broad spectrum of ADHD and autism is very broad. There is very high functioning, high level. And there is very nonverbal and low level. 
of these both neurodivergent topics that I'm going to talk about. And how it came about with me was about a month ago, and it's something that I have been struggling with because of the fact that I could not get over some of my trauma. And my brain was always, always, I mean, like, if you're watching me, my brain is going like, I was talking before I came on my show that my brain is still working on a project I'm working on for a golf tournament in two days. My brain is still working on another project that I've been giving by one of my coaches. My brain is working on a, on a Lego series playing laughter yoga that I am going to do in a month at a retreat, but I want to have it all planned out because I'm going to go to Bali in a couple of weeks and I want to have it all planned out. So my brain is going so, so fast and in so many directions, a lot of people are like, oh my God, squirrel, 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 squirrel. And I used to take offense to when people would say squirrel, because some points today, what I had to do was go look out the window and go, oh, look at the bird. And that's what I do in the course of my day. And how ADHD came in my life was that my daughter has been saying for a while now that she feels she had ADHD. She took the test and she says, mom, I really think you should take the test. And I was like, oh, come on. I know I don't have it because I'm resistant. I don't want another label. This is just trauma. The way I act and my brain acts is just because it's gone through a lot of trauma. Well, there's also a thing called ADHD. I'm a high functioning ADHD adult, female. I also found out too, I have a high IQ. Hmm, I like that. Um, I have always known I have OCD, but I'm not high on the OCD level. I am actually kind of worked on my OCD. So I'm kind of on that lower. But if you think about everything, Think about any diagnosis you get in your life. You have a heart condition. It's a really bad heart condition. We need to do surgery ASAP. We need to put a defibrillator in there. We need to do all these things. Or you just have a blocked valve. So we want to go in and take this little thing from your thigh and run it up and clear out your heart. So it's the same thing with any other diagnosis in your life is that there's high levels and there's low levels. And I am actually on the higher level. And I realized I've been working with a client as well who has been kind of mid-level. And when I was asked, and I even am in therapy too. So when I went to therapy and I told my therapist, um, it came to my attention that I could have ADHD. She goes, you've never been diagnosed? Like, you didn't know? And I'm like, no, because I always fought. And that's where trauma comes into play with having ADHD is I always thought, oh, it's just my trauma brain. It's just because I've gone through trauma because I'm hypervigilant. If a noise happens around me, I can be focused. I can be hyper-focused right now. I'm working on this project for this golf tournament two days from now. And all of a sudden, bam. Oh, crap. Let me get up. Let me check this out. And then I go do that. And then I'm like, okay, now what was I working on? Oh, let me go work on this thing that someone has me doing for my business. Is that what I was working on? Oh, I don't know if that's what I was working on. So that's where, and then all of a sudden I hear the dog barking. Okay, what's the dog barking at? Let me go check it out. Or, oh my gosh, there's a bird outside the window. Let me go see what the bird's doing. That is what my brain does. And I always attribute it to the trauma that I'm just hyper vigilant because of trauma. Not necessarily. I do have trauma, but I also deal with a lot of ADHD traits. And it is almost time for our first break. And what I'm going to do is when we come back, we I'm going to dive even more and I'll give you some of the definitions and I'll give you some of the signs of neurodivergent, but some of those signs can also be trauma related and how when you've dealt with some trauma, you don't want any more labels. And I can tell you health 
labels I've been labeled with. I've walked out of doctor's office and said, no, I'm not accepting that. This one, I'm embracing a little bit more. And the reason I am is because, A, I want to help others out there who seem to get stuck sometimes on processing trauma and why sometimes it's harder for us just to let it go. I've done a great deal of let go and I've moved on a lot in my life from some of it, but sometimes things come up that I thought was trauma brain is not trauma brain. That squirrel, that hypervigilant is not necessarily trauma brain, but I've associated it with the trauma. So now it's working through the process. And I'm showing you like working through a process of reprogramming my brain again to say, okay, this is really not trauma. We are good. We are okay. This is just the way your brain functions. And how we get help sometimes with that. So we're going to go on our first break. Of course, as you know, I can just ramble on for the whole 55 minutes of this show without taking a break. But it's are important. And it's important for me to maybe drink some water and hydrate myself, just as breaks are important for you. So when you come back, we'll kind of catch back up as to what we we're talking about. But you were listening to me, Sandy Bird, on Emotional Elevator on the Inspired Choices Network. So stay tuned for more talk about neurodivergent and or trauma. Are you living a life of psychological trauma or suffering from an addiction? Are you ready to learn new techniques to elevate your emotions without sustaining or obtaining them from substances that are not good for your mind or body? Then continue to tune into Emotional Elevator with trauma, addiction, life, and spiritual coach, Sandy Bird, where you will learn techniques to elevate your emotions that don't require a magic pill, food, or impulsive behavior. Listen to Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to sandy at emotionalelevator.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back. Of course, I am Sandy Bird. I am the host of Emotional Elevator on the Inspired Choices Network. And like it says, if you want to reach out to me, Sandy at EmotionalElevator.com. Better yet, Sandy Bird with those two E's, B-Y-R-D, coach at gmail.com. If you want to have a conversation with me, and if this topic just seems to rouse something in you, reach out. But what I've kind of talked about tonight with neurodivergence and what kind of coach I am and how I can get you unstuck from those feelings that you worry about. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, I'm not smart enough. Oh, oh, I could never talk like she talks. Yes, you can. We all have the power within us to do what I'm doing. And to do what others are doing. It's just those feelings that we don't feel worthy enough. It's just those feelings we don't see value within ourselves. And that is a one of the other things when you are labeled with something in your life like neurodivergent. Sorry, I was going to look up so you can understand neurodivergent, some of the um, sides. But 
It is. It's understanding that. And as I was talking about in the first part of the show is how sometimes people don't realize that some of us, our brains don't function the same as theirs. And coming from severe trauma, I've always just taken it in as it's my trauma brain, my hypervigilant, my squirrel moments. And this has become such a big topic, squirrel moments. I, you can be in a conference and someone's looking away and they're like, oh, and squirrel. And I always took that very offensive, very offensive. It would get in my emotions. I would get feely. And I never understood why, because I didn't want to accept it was part of who I am. And I didn't want to accept that my brain was different. I already felt, and this is what, one of the things I used to worry about is I always felt I was different than everybody else and that people saw me differently, that sometimes I even thought I looked like an alien. I felt like an alien because I didn't think and feel like everybody else. And it wasn't until, like I said, a month ago, and I have worked with clients that have ADHD and I have friends that have autism and ADHD and being around them, I started seeing, wow, maybe they're, maybe they really don't have that. Maybe it's just trauma because that's what I, that's what I'm like them and trauma, they've just got trauma. But it was because I was, again, scared of another label and I was worried about it. And I was felt that people would look at me differently. But I realized, no, it makes me different. It makes me special. It makes me unique because I have learned in my daily routine how to control some of what I used to do. And now when I look back at things I did, where I just, someone would be talking, I'd interrupt and say something out of the blue. And they're like, that's relevant, Sandy, to what I'm talking about. Oh, no, it just popped in my head. <laughs> and now I realize that that's because I was neurodivergent. And I've learned techniques on how to, I actually learned techniques on how to work with clients. But I realize those are the same techniques I need to learn for myself. And what I'm going to do is kind of tell you what some of the signs are. And some of these signs, it's the same thing as everything else. My chest hurts does not necessarily mean I'm having a heart attack. My head hurts doesn't mean I suffer from migraines and I've got an aneurysm in my brain. There are signs that can relate to everything in our life. So whenever I talk about signs, I'm not telling you you have this or anything like that. I am just telling you there are some signs that are different. And other people go, oh, why? I, I That happened to me yesterday. Well, if you don't experience it every day, then it's not a reoccurring sign for you. And it does not necessarily mean you should run to somebody and ask to be tested. But there are tests out there online. And trust me, I passed them pretty good on the neurodivergent side. So, but it's difficulty with social interactions. I don't really have that. So when I first read that, I was like, oh, X, difficulty with communication, got a podcast, go networking, stand up in crowds, I'm a public speaker, X. But the problem is, is sometimes I go off topic. That is where I sometimes I could be sitting here talking about neurodivergent. And all of a sudden, I'm talking about the cat outside and how beautiful my cat is and the dog was barking. That's what it means. And it, social interactions mean sometimes shying away. So when I can explain it, then I can see it clear. Processing sensory information. I have struggled with that. I don't like certain fibers, certain clothes, certain things. And let me make this straight. I am not a psychiatrist. So do not sit there and say, saying you said I'm neurodivergent because I don't like wool. A lot of us don't like wool. So that's not what it means. It means there are certain fibers of fabrics I sense I can't wear. Also, there, and this was always chalked up to fibromyalgia. 
because I get headaches from certain scents. I cannot be around strong perfumes or colognes. And then I said, oh, it's not fibromyalgia. It's because trauma brain. Well, a lot of that too is now because those senses activate too much activity in my brain or deactivate it. Like I am one who can drink coffee and can go to bed. That should alert you to something. Issues with focus and concentration. Oh, absolutely. You can check, 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 check that. If, but I can be hyper-focused on something. And what that means is you can call me and say, hey, Sini, there's a deadline and I need you to submit this. And I'm like, no, because I'm still focused on this. I cannot switch off because I'm afraid to switch off of that. So that's where that comes into play. Intense interest in a particular topic or activity. Oh, yes, 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 yes. And that's where laughter yoga, that's where dancing for me, and that is where singing for me is very part of my day because I celebrate when I do get activities done now, I celebrate them. A lot of times people have come into my office and I'm working on something very diligently and I've got music going on. They're like, how can you focus with music going on? Because that's my brain. That's how my brain works. I can be singing along to a song and dancing along with it with my desk up, risen up, and I can I can completely finish something without losing focus on what I'm finishing up. Um, stuck in repetitive behaviors or routines. I have to have routines. Mm-hmm. Difficulty following instructions. Everyone who knows me knows See, these are rule bender, but it's because sometimes I don't understand the directions. Difficulty organizing thoughts. That is something that I have taught myself to do. So what I'm saying with that is this does not necessarily mean please run out and get a diagnosis, but it just tells you a little bit more about neurodivergent. And it will also feed into my show next week when you have children with neurodivergent. Coming up with that comes to ADHD which is misdiagnosed a lot with women because it happens to us later in life as our hormones change. That is some scientific facts right there. And a lot of us feel it's just the trauma and then the hormones and the trauma and the hormones. Sometimes it is that neurodivergent, that ADHD. See, I have two sons that were, one of them was very early diagnosed with ADHD, very young. Then I have another one who was diagnosed with ADHD later. My daughter around her teens, high school, tried to convince me she had ADHD. I told her she didn't. Now she's in her 20s. She just recently started talking to me about um, a job, questioning her because of her wanting to play music and how she focuses when she's music, when she's kind of dancing, when she's moving and everything like that. And she started taking the tests online. Don't put a lot of value behind them, but sometimes I do. And that's when she started scoring very high. She also has a high, a higher IQ as well. My sons do as well. And I was like, She's like, mom, I want you to take the test too. And that's when I also went to my therapist and talked about that. But anyway, it's almost halfway through the show. I've talked about neurodivergent and trauma. But what I wanted to get into after this break is that sometimes we really think our trauma brains keep us the way they are. But sometimes it's our brains are wired differently. And that's what I've learned about myself and one of my clients. I also want to go into techniques that I teach my clients to do for themselves, to keep them kind of more grounded than flailing, flailing, flopping, flailing, flopping, whatever. Because as you probably just listened to me for the last five minutes, I've just been giving you facts, 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 because my brain is so hyper-focused on making sure you understand what I'm trying to say about neurodivergent. And that is what 
I work with my clients on how to get your point across, but also how to celebrate the wins. Because even as a human who's gone through trauma, I see a lot of losses. And my clients come to me because they do. They worry about their self-worth. They worry about their self-value. They feel people don't listen to them. They feel people don't pay attention to them. They feel they're not appreciated because maybe they don't get their stuff in on time all the time. Maybe they come to work a little bit late here and there, but it's filling their cup back up so that others will appreciate them. Because have you ever really walked in a room and then we're going to go to break and you're kind of like, kind of meek and hanging over because I realize ever some people are listening to me and not watching me. You're kind of like slumped over. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And then all of a sudden you're walking around. What's wrong with you? Nothing. All of a sudden it spreads. And until you can lighten yourself up until you can bring joy back into yourself and fill your cup up and celebrate your wins, you're going to have still those feelings. You're still going to struggle and keep yourself up at night worrying about, am I being valued? Am I worthy enough? Because sometimes we can hyper-focus on that too, not just with trauma brains, but with neurodivergent brains that we only see our losses and not our wins. So we are going to go on that break. And when we come back, I'm going to continue the conversation on neurodivergent and our trauma. But I'm also going to give techniques that I teach my clients about how to celebrate the wins and how to properly go get diagnosed so that it can benefit you when it comes to work and how you perform in your life. So we're going to go to that break. And like we say, thank you for joining me. But you can reach out to me at Sandy with the two E's bird coach at gmail.com. If you have any questions or you want to dive into this or you're questioning yourself or you have those feelings that I've been talking about, even if you're not neurodivergent. And if you want to follow me on any social medias or if you're listening to me on any platforms, like, subscribe. Follow me because I have a lot of topics on here that I've talked about in my life, trauma and everything like that. But again, we are going to go to break and you're listening to Sandy Burr, the host of Emotional Elevator on Inspired Choices Network. And I'm sorry, I just got a pain in my side. So we're going to go to that break. Are you living a life of psychological trauma or suffering from an addiction? Are you ready to learn new techniques to elevate your emotions without sustaining or obtaining them from substances that are not good for your mind or body? Then continue to tune into Emotional Elevator with trauma, addiction, life, and spiritual coach, Sandy Bird, where you will learn techniques to elevate your emotions that don't require a magic pill, food, or impulsive behavior. Listen to Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to sandy at emotionalelevator.com. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back. You are listening to Sandy Bird, the host on, of Emotional Elevator on Inspired Choices Network. And of course, 
like I said, you can reach out to me at Sandy at EmotionalElevator.com or on any social media platform. Of course, my name on social media platforms is Sandy Steenstra with two E's as well. Bird with that B-Y-R-D. I am on social media platforms with my main name still attached to my last name. And just follow on any platforms you're listening to on Apple, follow, like, um, some of them you can comment on, do that, but subscribe. And if you really feel you have value to add to other people out there and you feel like you have many topics, come over to Inspired Choices Network and join the team over here because all of us are experts in fields, and sometimes you even hear us talking about similar things. We just have different perspectives on it. And everyone has a perspective on everything in life. So why not give your voice the value? Why not give yourself the worthiness that it deserves and come over here and join Inspired Choices Network? Start a podcast. Talk about these topics that you've worried about, maybe lost sleep of, If you're a coach or if you just feel like what could add value to your life is to talk about all the things that you've gone through and what value you can bring to the world. Because that is me summed up in a coach is I want to get you to live your purposeful life and let go of the things you worry about at night, like Do people like me? Are people going to listen to me? Am I worthy enough to be talking on a podcast? Is there value in what I offer? Because I know I have value in what I offer. I don't lose sleep over it. I used to lose, sorry, I used to lose sleep at night worrying, do people like me? Am I, do I feel loved? Am I a good wife? Am I a good mother? All these things that you too might be dealing with. That's why I'm the coach for you. But tonight I've been talking about neurodivergent and a lot of neurodivergent and even trauma brain. There are steps to take to start elevating it. And it's celebrating the wins. That is the biggest lesson I learned for myself. And I teach my clients celebrate your wins and however it means to celebrate your wins because I do that a lot more now is celebrate the wins we are quick we are very quick to and I was talking to someone today about this we are very quick to bring up our losses or to bring up our lack of and worry about that but when do we really celebrate our wins and If you've gone through severe trauma and you feel like you're not neurodivergent, but you have trauma brain, you got to celebrate the wins. And what I mean by that is when you wake up every day, celebrate that. Celebrate. I'm getting up out of bed. Check. That is a victory. I am getting up today. I woke up today. I'm going to celebrate me for that. And that means even if you are taking a day and you know that self-love means I'm going to spend the day in bed and not feel guilty about it. Because a lot of people, when you want to spend the day in bed, you feel guilty about it. I don't. So celebrate that you woke up if that means you're going to stay in bed all day. But then just start breathing in and shaking it out. Because that is one thing I work with my clients on and I work with myself is it's all about taking these good breaths in. So we're going to do, we are, we're going to do this tonight because I feel inclined to do it and the universe is telling me to do it. So what we're going to have, three is my magic number, three. Three good deep breaths in. So what it is, is you're going to breathe in, filling your whole belly up, your lungs up, And then side up, but shake it out. So if you're sitting down, you still can shake it out. Just shake it out. If you were laying in bed, shake it out. Celebrate that. I'm just going to shake this out. And what I do a lot 
is I laugh when I do that. <laughs> and I shake it out because I celebrate by laughing. That's one of the things I do when I'm shaking it out. And if you are trauma or neurodivergent and you have just completed a task or you've just said, you know what? I'm done with worrying about that or I'm done with thinking about that. Celebrate it by doing something for yourself. And sometimes that does mean ground yourself by taking these deep breaths in. Now the next deep breath in that I always like to incorporate is breathing deep in. And as you sigh it out, uh, kind of dance, move your body. Because when you have trauma, it gets pinned in this body. And this body, when you move it, and if you can't move, if you are in a wheelchair or if you are in bed, you can still move your eyes, move your nose, move your cheeks, move something. Get that movement in you. Just move. Get that movement in you. And then the next deep breath I always tell people to do. And you can imagine this. This is why I also talk to my clients about doing yoga and stuff. And I work a lot with that. Meditation and yoga. Because you can visualize. You don't necessarily have to do some of these movements. Because let's say... You don't want to physically move your body because you just don't want to physically move. You can imagine this. And when you use your imagination, you are you are actually going through the motions in your brain and you're reprogramming it. So let's say you just want to imagine you're breathing in, you're reaching up. And what I want you to do is grab that crown of victory and honor and put it on your head. And the thing with this crown is it's a little bit big for your head. So now you got to stand up a little bit taller and walk a little bit taller and walk in your victory, in your honor, in your power, because that's what we tend not to do. We tend to sit there and see failures, especially when you struggle with a label that you feel defines you. These labels do not define you. Trauma does not define me. Trauma does not define my clients. And I teach them techniques like this, these breathing and stuff, to reward themselves, to celebrate who they are. Because in life, we have to celebrate our wins, our victories, our honor. I put out a recent post out there about we, and it was a stoic today. I do the daily stoic. I have routines like I do the daily stoic, stoic every day. I I teach my clients to either meditate in bed. I do a kundalini kriya every day. I'm working definitely on a thousand day straight of kriya, kundalini kriya that I'm doing. It's a very five minute one. If you work with me, I'd even teach you that. But it's just getting me in a routine to celebrate the wins to celebrate who I am. But what I was about to say is I read the story today and it was all about how we don't celebrate our victories. We don't give ourselves medal of honors. We're quick to go into battle, but we don't, we're quick to go into battle within ourselves, but we don't celebrate the victories within ourselves. And that is a big thing. I know I have a purple heart of courage and that's not from being in any wars, but I've been in a battle within myself and working with other clients who that's something that they realize that they've been in a battle, not with the outside world, not with all the things they worry about, not with all the things they stay up at night and think about, not, not what keeps them up at night, but why they don't have happiness in their life because they don't know how to celebrate the wins. They're so focused on the losses, the trauma, the labels, the health issues. We can all celebrate a victory of getting up every day. And that's what I work with my clients in celebrating go out and celebrate with yourself. You don't have to have people around you to celebrate. I still 
know people who say, oh, you're going out to eat? Who's going with you? Oh, I'm going by myself. You're going by yourself? What do you mean you're going by yourself? Do you want me to come with you? And they're trying to change their plan. No, I'm going to celebrate myself. So I want to go with by myself. That's what I have my clients to do. Challenge them to go by themselves. Challenge them to sit somewhere and focus and eat a meal and take every bite moment by moment. And just encompass eating. And that's another thing that I teach my clients is especially with clients that are neurodivergent, is take a meal, whether it's your favorite meal or anything, and each bite envision and take in. Sorry, you can tell I just ate two. Um, but take in a bite and really chew that bite. Close your eyes. What does it look like? What does it taste like? What does it smell like? You know, if you've ever gone and done a wine tasting, swirl the glass. So you're getting a vision. You're getting the visionary. You want to encompass all your senses. You're smelling it. And sometimes you're putting it in your mouth. You're whistling. Off. Sometimes when you're swirling it, you're listening to it. You're taking it in so you can enjoy it. We should do that with ourselves in life. And I'm going to come back with some more techniques. And what to do to help you if you need to slow your brain down, like I still probably need to do today, slow your brain down because it's either a trauma brain or it's a neurodivergent brain. And the techniques that I teach people slow that brain down. So you're listening to me, Sandy Bird, and I probably filled you up with all this information. You're listening to me, Sandy Bird. On Emotional Elevator, on Inspired Choices Network. If you want to reach out to me, reach out to me at Sandy with those two E's, bird, coach at gmail.com. Not really promoting my website right now because we're about to redo and revamp it. So it's the old me, not the new me. So you can go to my website, but new me. I'm about to come up with some programs and some big things coming up in the pike. But if you just want to reach out and work with me, because you do have the feelings that I've described of unworthiness, keeps you up at night or not feeling valued or do they really love me? Am I a good mom? Am I a good wife? Am I a good daughter-in-law? Am I capable of? I wish I could speak up. So again, we are going to go on that break. Because I am running out of time tonight. So let's go to that break. Are you living a life of psychological trauma or suffering from an addiction? Are you ready to learn new techniques to elevate your emotions without sustaining or obtaining them from substances that are not good for your mind or body? Then continue to tune into Emotional Elevator with trauma, addiction, life, and spiritual coach, Sandy Bird where you will learn techniques to elevate your emotions that don't require a magic pill, food, or impulsive behavior. Listen to Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific, on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Emotional Elevator with Sandy Bird. To participate in this program, Join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Sandy at EmotionalElevator.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. Sorry, but I'm kind of fidgeting a little bit. Need to move my body. Got one of those very famous tetanus shots yesterday, and I can feel it working through my body now. Yes, I realized yesterday I hadn't had a tetanus shot in so many years because I have not focused on that part of my life. Um, but I've been talking tonight about neurodivergent and our trauma. I am Sandy Bird. I am the host here at Emotional Elevator, on Emotional Elevator, at Inspired Choices Network. And of course, like I said, if you feel at all like you cannot focus 
if you can't get past anything that your brain is centered in or you get distracted very easily, there is a chance you could be neurodivergent, but it can also be some forms of trauma brain. I've figured out and I work with clients about their neurodivergence, but I've learned a lot of techniques and I teach my clients some techniques. And like I've already been talking about in the first part of the show is it's all about figuring out, are you neurodivergent? Do you have a trauma brain? Can you focus? Does your brain just wander? Are you on so many different topics? But how to celebrate when you have these wins and how to ground yourself by doing breath and how to also laugh and dance and sing because it also activates our brains differently when we do those things. And I even work with my clients who just have trauma to learn how to laugh again to learn how to sing and dance and celebrate the wins in your life. There was something else just today I learned and I'm going to share. Did you realize that if you, and I can't put it in my mouth and say it at the same time, you put a pencil and they suggest a pencil in your mouth, it teaches you how to smile more for 60 seconds. And it can also create those positive sensations and those happy hormones by putting a pencil in your mouth for 60 seconds. I'm going to start teaching my clients that as well. And I did it today while I was working on something and it kept me focused. It's kind of funny how something that is also to help you get those happy hormones and to increase happiness within yourself to bite on a pencil because it gets you to smile Helps me improve my smile. See, my smile is better because I've been doing it. But it also kept me focused. It kept me focused today. So there are techniques out there. And when I was biting on it, I wasn't worried. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't having those thoughts of, oh, I should be working on this, not that. Because sometimes we have thoughts that control us. And it's getting past those thoughts that do take control of us, whether it's through trauma or whether it's through a health issue, physical issue, whether it's through an emotional issue, a psychological issue. But we can reprogram these mindsets. We can reprogram our mindsets. And if you have been labeled with something that you feel is a label, celebrate it. Don't see, don't see the bunker, see the celebration, see the victory in it. Because that's what I want people to do is to celebrate our victories. Because when you come from trauma, and as my clients who I work with come from trauma, we want to, I want to teach them how to celebrate victories. And stop sitting in losses. Because a lot of times it's easier for us to sit in our loss and sit in our misery and try to get misery loves company than to celebrate ourselves and to celebrate who we are in life and to celebrate our differences. Because here's the one thing I've learned working with clients is there's all a big theme. There are things that we all worry about, that we all, as a collective, seem to worry about. Am I good enough? There's not a lot of people out there that are walking around saying they're good enough. Look at Olympic athletes. But, again, I'm running out of time. Thank you for joining me tonight on Emotional Elevator. Um, I know this was a topic that a lot of you have been questioning, neurodivergent and or trauma. But reach out to me, Sandy Bird, with those two E's, B-Y-R-D, coach at gmail.com. Like I said, I'm going through some changes through my website. But thank you. Thank you for listening to the Emotional Elevator Show. Sandy returns Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, 
Start elevating your emotions and stop riding the emotional elevator that is stopping you from living the life you deserve.